them and get you all worked out. Hey everybody, happy Saturday of a three day weekend. I'm looking forward to a little bit of a break. Um, so I'm gonna be doing an apron today. It's a one yard um, apron pattern. I will share the link. It was definitely a free pattern. It's called One Yard Magic Apron. Um, and so this is the main pattern piece. So all you basically need is this pattern piece. If you wanna do a pocket, you need a pocket piece. And then you need um, straps for the neck and the waist. And then I'm also, you can hear a little puppy. <laughs> And I, I'm also, um, whenever I have a curved edge, you can fold it and sew it. But what I like to usually do is um, just use bias tape to finish it. So I have a bias tape maker. It's super easy. When you do the bias tape um, and it is going on something that's a curve, you do need to make sure it is actually on the bias, which is a 45 degree angle on the fabric. The neck strap and the waist strap, it doesn't matter which direction you, you cut them. They don't need to stretch. But when you're putting something on a curve, you need it to stretch a little bit. So even though this isn't stretchy fabric, by cutting it at that 45 degree angle, it actually will stretch a little bit, which will make it curve. So I'm actually gonna start with the pocket. And um, Jen Kennedy was gracious enough to volunteer to embroider me a panel to use as a pocket on my apron. So she had messaged me asking me if that was something that I was interested in. And I said, sure, why not? And because I'm going to hopefully be back in school one day, I wanted something on my apron that I say to the kids all the time. So she was nice enough to embroider this panel for me. What's the recipe say? Because I say that um, frequently in my classroom. So I'm very thankful that she did that. Um, you could make a pocket out of your um, other fabric if you want to but I'm gonna use this and she actually did it um, perfect because I'm actually going to just fold it in half and sew it like a pillow and leave a little opening, turn it, clip the corners, turn it, and then um, put it on the fabric. So I'm super thankful. I will take a picture of her card. If you're interested in, she does do embroidery for um, people. Um, and so it would be nice to support her because she was so generous in um, doing that for me and sending it to me and um, I really appreciate that. So for my pocket, what I'm gonna do is fold that panel piece in half and the top part is going to be the top of the pocket where the fold is and then I'm gonna sew around the other three sides leaving a hole at the bottom so that I can turn it and then like I said, I'll clip the, clip the corners and then um, um, turn it, press it, and then top stitch it. Now I am going to make sure that this is straight before I do it, just so that it looks neater. So I'm just going to trim the sides a little bit. When you embroider stuff, you always embroider it a little bit um, bigger than you need it. So I'm just going to line it up so I can trim just a tiny bit off. I don't want to, I don't want to cut too much off because I do have to sew it and I don't want the, the words to be um, in my stitching. Um, so I'm just trying to trim it just a little bit so that it will be even but will be nice and straight. Okay, so I cut the two sides and now I'm just gonna trim the bottom real quick to make sure that's straight as well. I believe the pocket size, if you follow the directions on the apron, the pocket size is nine by seven when you first cut it out. And then it ends up being, I believe, um, eight by six at the end. And that's the one I put on that other apron that I had made back when I first. Um, started doing this. Okay, so I'm going to start with my apron piece. Just come over here. So I have I have a little bit of border on all the sides, so I'm going to sew at a half an inch in when I do this. And again, I'm going to start up at the fold. I'm going to sew down 
to my bottom. Um, you can measure the corner if you if you feel like you need to. So I'm going to back stitch, cut my threads. So you can see I've sewn across in there. Kaylee, can you make sure the camera's good, honey? Yeah, hold on. And then I'm gonna start over here. Yeah, it's good. Okay. There. So if you go to pivot and it's not lined up with the edge of the presser foot, you can go and do another stitch. So I'm gonna pivot. Until I get to the fold and back stitch. Okay, so I have a hole here. So now I have to make sure that I cut my edges. So I'm going to lay it down and take my scissors. And then the top corners, just you only cut, have to cut a little bit off um, because it's only half the size. A fabric and then at the bottom where you pivoted you got to cut across making sure that you don't cut through your stitching okay so I was able to do that so now I'm going to turn it so my right sides are out and then I'm going to use my point turner To make sure my corners are poked out. So when you take the time to trim your corners and you poke them out, it ends ends up giving you such a um, a much nicer finished product. Um, if I didn't want, want to do a double like this, you, which you don't have to, um, you could take your rectangle and basically fold down the top and hem it. And then you fold your sides in and then you do something called mitering the corner. But since this panel was perfect for what I'm doing, I, I didn't feel I needed to do that. So there's my block. So I'm just going to press it flat real quick. Pressing is something that some people think is um, just optional, but when you are sewing, pressing is super important to do um, in your steps. So I'm just making sure that my um, seam allowance is exactly on the edge on the side it wasn't when I first pressed it. So I'm just using my fingers to bring the seam allowance to the edge. And then repress it. I think the rest of my sides are okay. Oh, this one's in a little bit. Okay, so I gotta press nice. So now um, I'm gonna do a couple things. So I'm gonna take my main apron piece here and I'm going to place the pocket on the apron. So I'm going to lay it down and the top of the apron is going to be folded down um, about an inch or so so I don't want it super close to the top. So I'm just going to make sure it's centered. If you wanted to you could definitely um, measure just to make sure. But when it's on your body, you wouldn't be able to tell if it's a little bit different. And then because I want to make sure this stays when I pick it up, I'm just gonna put a couple pins in it just to make sure that it doesn't move on me. So you don't need too many because again, it's not gonna move very much. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna top stitch 
around the edges of it. You need to make sure you back stitch at the beginning and end. And then I'm going to do the curved edges first. Okay. So I'm going to put this in and then put my needle in the, um, completely to the right. And then I'm going to use the edge of the pocket piece matched up with the edge of my presser foot. And that'll make sure that I sew directly the whole way around. And then I sew straight. it in the corner so when I pivot I'm just checking to make sure that the pocket is lined up with the edge of the fabric which it is or the edge of the presser foot if it wasn't good I'd want to um, pivot back and just do one more stitch it's better to stop a little early if you're unsure. That way you don't accidentally go too far. Rather than going too far and then you having to take it out. Okay, pivot again. Make sure I'm lined up with the edge of the presser foot, which I am. And so when I sewed the bottom of this pocket, I sewed right over the opening. So that's, I didn't need to um, hand sew it or anything. It's just when I sewed, that's one way to finish that opening part. Okay, and when you get to the end, you definitely want to back stitch. Um, I have some pocket, I mean, I have some aprons that don't have pockets, um, but I actually like to have a pocket on my apron because um, when I'm in class, it helps me if I have like a pen and I also have like a cordless phone in my classroom for if, if there's emergencies. So it's nice to be able to have a pocket to stick that in there. Okay, so I got my pocket on. So the next thing I'm going to do is do my curved edges. So for this one, like I said, I made bias tape. So I basically cut one inch strips and then use my bias tape maker to fold the ends and impress it. If you work with bias tape a lot and don't have a bias tape maker, I would definitely recommend um, getting one. You pick the, the one that's the size that you need. You feed the fabric in here and it automatically folds the sides in and you press it. This was like an amazing tool that I had bought a while ago and never used it until I started doing masks. So that's been good. So I'm going to sew this on the right side of the fabric along the curve and then I'm going to do the same thing on the other one. So this is single fold bias tape, which means that it has um, two folds on the side meeting in the center. Um, double fold bias tape means that it would be folded a second time and pressed. So when you buy it in the store, you can buy single fold or double fold. If, you, if I wanted to see the bias tape on the edge on the outside and have the edge enclosed in it, I would buy double fold. But because I'm just doing this to finish the edge and then that piece is gonna be on the inside, I'm just going to do single fold. So I'm not going to pin this because it's actually, I need the fabric to move a little bit on my bias tape as I go around the curve. That's going to help make sure that my, um, that it's going to lay flat when I'm done. So I'm going to move my needle to the middle position and I'm going to be sewing right in that one crease. So I have the one side open. I have the edges matched up and then I'm going to sew in the crease and I don't need to actually back stitch here because I'm going to be folding the sides and the bottom of the apron in and so I don't need that. So every once in a while just flatten it out make sure it's good and make sure I'm sewing inside right where the fold is. So like I said, you could you could just fold the fabric and, and sew on the curve, but sometimes it doesn't really sit flat when you do that because it is a curve. So the, the edge of the curve is much smaller than the part that you're actually going to be sewing into, and you can end up getting a lot of um, scrunching and it just doesn't sit flat. Um, so I like to use bias tape. You can buy bias tape, but it's actually kind of expensive to buy it, but you don't have to go through the process of making it. But I like to sometimes make it so it matches the fabric, because then if somebody looks on the 
um, other side of the apron, it's going to look nice and finished. And you do want to make sure all of your edges are finished on this because um, when you wash it, which you need to wash aprons a lot because um, they get food and stuff on them, then the edges won't fray or anything. So my bias tape is a little bit longer, which is fine because I'm just going to trim it off. So I sewed the bias tape along the curve. So now, because it's already um, pressed and everything, I'm going to fold it again where the rigid, where that fold was that I sewed, and then I'm going to fold it in one more time. But I'm actually going to press that before I sew it, so I'm not going to do that yet. So now I'm going to do the same thing on the other curved edge. So I'm laying it down, I'm making sure that my needle is lined up with where that fold is. Um, and when you're making an apron, I would definitely recommend using a woven fabric for it. Um, I would not make it out of a stretchy fabric. I forget where I got this fabric, but I have some left, so I might make some masks out of it. I think it's kind of fun. Okay, so every so often, you just want to make sure that you're making sure that your edges, your raw edges are lined up with each other. And so because I cut this bias tape on a 45 degree angle, it's able to stretch a little bit as it goes around the curve. I forget how much I paid for the bias, bias binding kit. It was definitely a good investment because I've used it a couple times so far. So again, once I get to the end, no need to backstitch because we're going to be folding the end under. So now I just want to press these two parts. So I'm just going to press everything towards the bias binding. And then I'm going to bring the bias binding into the inside and you'll see how nice and flat it will sit even though it's a curve. So I just want to make sure my seam is right on the edge and then I'm going to press it again. You And you could actually do this the whole way, oh, steam's hot, the whole way around the apron if you'd like to. Um, but because the other edges are straight, those will be fine to just basically do like you would normally have something. So again, I'm going to press the curve and then I'm going to bring everything Okay, and then the last thing I need to do for this part is sew along the inside of the fold and that'll hold those down. So the right side you'll just see stitching and on the wrong side, oops, you'll see your bias binding. So again, when I do this one, I'm going to keep my needle in the um, center position and then I'm just going to make sure that I'm pretty much on really close to the fold, the inside fold. It's always a good idea every once in a while to just readjust it and make sure everything's sitting straight. And because the bias binding is able to stretch a little bit, it's able to be, this. it's able to sit flat on that inside edge, even though the bias tape is a little bit smaller. 
than the rest of it. And you notice I haven't cut off the end yet and that's because I'm waiting until I'm done with this part. So if I didn't want to end up cutting it too short. And again, I'm not going to worry about back stitching there because we're going to be folding that. So on the inside of the apron, it looks like this. And on the outside of the apron, you will just see stitching. So if you wanted to do a contrasting fabric, you actually could and then do it the opposite way and bring it over to the other side. But my whole goal with this was just to be able to finish the edges, so I wasn't really looking for any decoration here. So now I'm going to do the same thing, stitching close to the inside edge of the curve. is curved the most you may notice that the bias tape is a little skinnier than at the parts where it sits flat and that's just because it's going around the curve so that's why I'm I'm using the inside fold as a guide instead of lining up the edge with the presser foot or something like that just so that I can make sure we're good okay so now I got both my curved edges done so um, before I do the top in the sides um, in the bottom I need to make sure my straps are done because I need to tuck them in there so first thing I want to cut off any excess that I have sticking over the edges So to do the straps, they had you cut out strips that were two and a half, I think tw by 24 for the neck and then by 35 for the sides. I did not have 35 inches of fabric, so mine are a little bit shorter, um, but it should still be fine. So I've done three of them already for you just to speed up a little bit. So I'm going to do the last one. So what we want to do is make a tube and turn it. I don't know. I don't see it. Um, technical difficulties. Oh, I'll figure that one out. I just don't know where the safety pin went. I don't know. Okay, so I'm going to take my strip and I'm going to fold it in half so it's long and skinny. And then with my needle in the middle position, I'm going to sew this so that'll make it about three so the seam allowance you don't want your seam allowance too big when you're doing this because um, if it's too big then it's harder to turn I don't know what it is with this thread but it always comes out okay so I'm going to back stitch at the beginning because I am going to be pulling on it so I just want to make sure that my raw edges are even with each other. So every once in a while, again, just to make sure the raw edges are matched up. And I just have the edge of my presser foot in line with the edge of the fabric. I'm going to use my safety pin 
And I would use a bigger one when you're doing this because this is a wider strap. And I'm going to stick it into the fold about a half an inch from the top. So it looks like that. And then I'm going to turn the safety pin so it goes down in. I'm going to push the safety pin and then pull all these wrinkles up over the edge. So this is the part where if you have too big of a seam allowance for the opening that you have, it will get stuck and it's harder to pull through. So I just push the safety pin a little bit, get some scrunches, and then move those scrunches to the end to turn it. Um, and you have to be careful too not to get too many wrinkles down at the end, or it almost becomes like a knot and it won't turn. So if you get stuck, you have to come down here and you have to pull some of these a little bit straighter. And then once your safety pin comes out the other side, it should be a lot easier to turn because you can hold onto the fabric and you just pull. Okay, and then the last step for this part is to um, iron it. And when I iron it, I try to iron it flat with the seam down the middle. Make sure you take the safety pin out. Four. I did. No, I was telling them. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Okay, so we lay. I lay it down so that the seam loss is in the center, or the seams in the center, and then I'm just going to take my iron, and I'm going to go back and forth as I move. And that's going to flatten it out. And again, don't worry about if your seam allowance isn't completely centered the whole way. Um, that's not a big deal because you're just using these for ties anyways. Okay, now all my ties are ready, but I also have to get this part ready for, for it. So if you want to um, measure this, you can. But I'm not going to measure it because I've done this before. So I'm going to fold down the top of the apron about an inch, maybe a little bit bigger. And I'm going to press it. Then I'm going to open it up, fold my raw edge into the fold, and then press it again. So I have a double fold. So that'll um, basically finish off all my edges that are in there. And then when I'm ready, I'm going to put my neck straps in here so that when I sew across, I get the neck straps caught in there. So I got to do the same thing with the bottom. So again, if you want to measure this, you can. I'm not. I'm not going to because it's. I'm gonna just eyeball it, and it actually doesn't really matter. I mean, you don't want it super crooked. So you press the bottom. When you're done pressing it once, I'm going to open it up. Make sure the raw edge touches the fold and then fold it again. So our, we have a double fold hem. So I'm going to press a little bit, move down, fold a second section. Once that's good, press it, and then I'm going to fold it the last section. Okay, so the top and bottom are done. So the last thing I have to do are the side seams. And I'm going to do those the same way, and I'm going to be sticking the waist straps out of the side seams. So again, I'm just going to estimate and I'm going to show you um, a trick for the corner. So the sides I'm just going to estimate about an inch. And I'm going to do the same thing again.
Okay, now when you have two double folds going into each other, it works best if you do something called mitering the corner. So I have a little extra because the one edge is a curve. So I'm going to clip the extra off and then I'm going to open this up and you will see the press marks. So they're in there. So what I'm going to do is press it in on the inner fold and then re refold the side and the bottom in and that's called mitering a corner so it takes some bulk out of the corner and it allows it to sit flat so i'm going to do that now i do realize i have a little piece sticking out so i'm going to go inside of here and just clip this part that's sticking out so that i don't have any raw edges showing okay so there's my one corner so now I'm going to do the other side the same way. So the sides I didn't fold in quite as much when I was doing than when I did the bottom. So the bottom I did about one and one fourth. The sides I'm only doing about an inch. Again, open it up. Fold that in. And it's a good idea to do all of this pressing at one time because you're going to need to put your straps in. So this allows me to do all my pressing now. And then when I go over to the machine to sew everything, um, I don't have to keep stopping. I can, I have everything ready to go so I can sew continuously around this. So again, folding. Fold the bottom. And then I'm going to open it up. To miter it. So where the lines crisscross, I'm folding it in. And if you're going to see anything, so I'm actually going to trim across this corner on a diagonal first so that all of that will be gone. Okay, so fold it in. Okay, so again, now I have a nice point to my corner. It's not too bulky. Give it a quick press. Okay, so now I'm ready to place my straps in the correct position. So they'll be all ready to go when I sew and then I can just do one continuous sewing. So you have two um, neck pieces that are shorter and two side pieces that are longer. So just make sure you don't mix them up with each other. Your neck obviously doesn't need as much. So I'm going to take one of my longer strips and I'm going to stick it in the side seam at the corner and then I'm going to bring it towards me. Okay, this is gonna be a little bit thick to sew, so make sure that you have, no, I need a regular pin. So make sure that you have a needle that's going to be able to go through all of those layers. And the straps are the only part that I am pinning at this moment. And I'm just pinning to just hold it there. I'm not actually going to sew through the pins. I'll take this out. Okay, and then I'll take my other one and do the same thing over here. And when I'm doing this, I want my seam to be up when I first put it in. Right? Mm -hmm. No, I shut my seam down, actually. Have the seam down, because then when you flip it, the seam will be up, which will be on the wrong side. So I need to fix the other one. So then I'm just going to that strap there yeah I'm gonna turn around because I don't want the seam to be showing on the outside where the straps are I'll just fix that one and so by by tucking it inside of there you'll finish off that raw edge of the straps okay, so that's good and then you're gonna take your two neck pieces which again aren't as long 
and you're going to do the same thing at the neck corner. So I'm going to put the fabric there and then I'm going to bring it up, put a pin across there, and then I'm going to take the other. It's pretty thick, that's why it's hard to pin there. And take the other one, then in the other corner, and do the same thing. And now I'm able to sew across the top, and then I'm going to do the sides and bottom all in one um, set of stitching. That's super thick. I mean, just have to hold this one. Okay, so now I'm going to go over to my machine. And like I said, I'm going to sew the top first. And I'm going to enclose everything in there. So I'm going to move my needle to the left position now and line my edge of my presser foot up with the bottom of that fold. I'm going to back stitch, stitch across the top. And then when you're going to get close, I would just take the pin out that you put in there because I didn't even put it the right direction. Go down to the end. Make sure you back stitch. Trim your threads. Okay, so there is the top. Now, because I sewed down here, this is flipping. So I'm gonna do another set of stitching along the top of the apron, and that'll just hold the straps up so that they're um, not going down. I'll have to do it this way. And this stitching I'm going to do a little closer to the edge. So again, back stitch, and you could essentially just do this stitching right where the strap is, but I'm just going to go the whole way across the top just so it looks more uniform. You know. Hmm? I try to take green and it's not Okay, and then when I come over here, I'll sew across the strap. And again, it's a little bit thick at these parts because you have so many layers. Okay, so now when you look at it, those aren't flipping around anymore. And then you would tie these once it's on you and the neck is done. So now we just need to, and I'll go back and trim those sides. So now I'm going to do the three sides. Three. Yeah, the sides and the bottom. Oh. Okay, so just double check and make sure everybody's, or everybody, everything <laughs> is lined up. Oops. Again, it's kind of thick at the, that one part. Very good. So I'm sewing the side, and then when I get down to the bottom, going to pivot so when you get close to the bottom where that mitered corner is you want to go a little slow okay so I'm almost at the corner so I'm going to just double check and make sure everything's sitting flat and then I'm going to pivot once I get to the corner and I'm overlapping the bottom. Then I'm going to sew along the bottom. Oops. The bobbin isn't happy. I some extra cut off of it. What's the beginning? So the beginning and the end are getting looped in each other. Oh. Okay, so let's try that again. So because I had to stop, I'm going to just overlap and then I'll make sure I go back to that part. What is going on? Technical difficulties. 
of the sleeping. Okay. <clears throat> I have an automatic thread cutter in there and sometimes the thread cutter um, gives me some issues. Okay, there we go. All better. Okay, so hopefully we'll have enough bobbin thread to make it. Okay, so I'm just going to overlap a little bit where I had to end. Make sure that these are overlapping each other. And then once I get overlapping the side seam, mm. turn. And now I'm on my last section. I'm going to sew here until I get to my top part where the strap is. When I get to the strap, I'm just going to hold it because my pin was in there and make sure it's coming off straight. Make sure you back stitch. Okay, now the same thing is happening here, but because these sides are so big, I'm just going to do another little set of stitching right here and the same thing on the other side to hold that strap out. Do that real quick and then we'll be done so I can't wait to wear this once I'm back at school and again I appreciate Jen for making that um, embroidery panel for me I think it's perfect and a lot of other teachers who teach culinary I'm sure would agree and if you have anything that you need embroidered Definitely hit her up and she'll embroider it for you. So after I cut my threads, I'll be, be done. So here's my finished apron. Yes, girl. So if the strings are long enough, I actually like tying the apron in the front of me, but you could tie it behind you as well. Um, you can sew across the ends of the straps if you want, or you can just leave them raw. So there we go. Hopefully you learned something and have a good day.